And I, I know, I think the way to approach this with you, Lee, is that this is a, a progressive group, right? But I wonder, from your point of view, and we talk about Kamala Harris as we wait for her to meet with Netanyahu, how you see the vice president on the issue of Israel and Gaza and what type of an impact do you think that'll have on her campaign? That's right. We are a progressive group. We represent a network of thousands of grassroots local organiz indivisible organizations around the country in every state uh, and uh, congressional district uh, who organize for progressive policies and to fight uh, the MAGA movement. Um, and what I would say on this is I think it's I think it's broadly recognized that Vice President Harris has been one of the uh, more forward leaning voices within the administration in uh, expressing concern for uh, the humanitarian crisis that has been created uh, by the the onslaught on Gaza, uh, expressing concern for uh, the human impact on the Palestinian people, um, and I think that's I think that's broadly recognized across. Mm -hmm. uh, all, so you see her as a progressive, as better than Biden. Is that a way to put it, or am I going too far? I don't think that. Look, she's the sitting vice president of, uh, and she's a, an administration official. So she's part of the Biden administration, um, and that's that's just uh, as it, that is what it is. Um, and there are obviously limits, and there are obviously some constraints around, you know, how much of a different set of policies you're going to have on foreign right. policy as a vice president when uh, you are a sitting member of the current administration. So would it matter who she picked to run with her? Uh, you know, like we have the VP picks. We've been talking about it throughout the week. You know, if she. Uh, some progressives have told us, middle of the screen there, Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania is, is pro-Israel. He's Jewish, but he's also pro-Israel policy-wise would be would be a tough pick from their point of view. They might like to see somebody else. Are, are, are you in that camp? Do you, do, does it matter who she picks? We don't organizationally have a position on that, and that's not sure. the kind of position that we take without consulting with our local indivisibles. What I would say is our, our top position and our top concern is picking somebody who can help us keep this coalition united, who can help us uh, push through to win, and who can help us maximize that win. Because what we feel the most strongly about is that we need to emerge from this election in a blowout, we need to win so mm -hmm. big that Donald Trump can't possibly contest the results. We need to win a Democratic Senate so that we can pass the kind of game-changing reproductive freedom legislation, democracy reform, care legislation, all the stuff that we are really excited to go out and promise on the campaign trail. All right, let's talk about that for, for a minute or two, because um, on the tablet here, guys, I have the polling again. And, you know, it's been a good week for Harris in terms of momentum. This is the morning consult, national poll, but still uh, she's up on Trump 46-45. Obviously, that's within the margin, but the move is towards Harris. And then when we talked about the Emerson College poll that the Hill put out in the swing states, we'll have to drop the banner probably to see that. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. You know, Arizona is a Trump lead by five outside the margins. But here's the thing, and I'll just show this one more screen. Harris has improved on Biden in all of these states. So in other words, when Biden was at 40 in Arizona, she's gone to 44. She's gone up by five in Georgia, three in Michigan, three in Pennsylvania, four in Wisconsin. How do you see the race, A, right? And, and what do you think of the Republicans' response to Harris? I mean, they've been going, you could tell that they know it's a race going after, for example, as uh, a DEI hire, and now some Republicans say, knock that off, that's not going to work, it's going to backfire. Mispronouncing her name, maybe some don't know, but I think most are doing it on purpose. What, what do you make of, of, of how the race is, is shaping up? Well, first, what I would say is that anytime there is groundbreaking news, anytime there's a transformative shift in the race, you're going to need to wait a couple of days or a yes. couple of weeks then to really feel like the polling is settled enough to have a full appraisal of what's going on. But it's very clear that her arrival in the race has injected a massive shot of enthusiasm across uh, the Democratic base, across the Democratic coalition, across the grassroots. I know when I look, uh, when I talk to our members, when I hear from people around the country, people are having new folks show up to meetings. Numbers are off the charts in terms of what people, uh, how many new people are coming in. They are so excited. We're seeing reach into uh, populations and demographic groups that we were not seeing get excited about this election before, like young people. Um, and, and it's a really just extraordinary sea change in a relatively short period of time. Now, simultaneously, no one on our side had any illusions that Republicans were going to respond to this by whipping out the old racist, sexist playbook and just throwing everything that they could at her. So the DEI attacks, um, a lot of the sexist smears that are going on, we yeah. knew this stuff was coming. We expected this kind of attack. This clip we have it at the um, bottom. J.D. Vance talking about yeah, this is old clip making the rounds about how, you know, people without children, you talked about a cat lady, I guess, something like that. Um, of course, she does. She's got stepchildren. But anyway, uh, to your point. Yeah. 
Well, look, I think that's an example of the contrast between the two parties. We think you ought to have the freedom to make the family uh, that is right for you. They think that they ought to get in your business, define whether your blended family is real, define. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.